the president signs off on a commission to deal with our debt. Tonight, the man some say could very well be our next president. Who has a better idea? Thank you very, very much. Thank you. So, great, Scott, this guy could be the real national deal. Is this Ronald Reagan reincarnated, as some conservatives hope and insist? With me, the Fox Biz All-Stars, including Jonathan Honig, Thomas Belisis, and Imogen Lloyd Webber joining me right now. Imogen, what do you make of that? Well, it's all very interesting, isn't it? But I think historically, isn't always that this happens. Um, the political party in power begins to lose seats and so forth in the midterms. This guy is ahead of the news curve, which is why he's hogging all the limelight, as it were, now. He's going to have competition for the news cycle come November. But, but it, it's happened fast in this country. I know you're from England and all that, but, but this is pretty fast, don't you think? <laughs> um, this has always happened, I think, surely, historically, when I sat at Cambridge being taught um, American history. This no, is don't much even get I was me taught. going about Cambridge, Jim. Sorry, but this uh, is what we were taught <laughs> always happened historically, so I think I we're getting see. a bit too excited about it. Sorry. Well, Imogen, here's the deal. We're doing a segment on it, okay? But, um, <laughs> but what do you make about it? I mean, a lot of people have sort of rallied around this guy as sort of like the face of this populist wave, is he? I got to tell you, Neil, again, thank you for having me back. It's, it's clearly evident that this is primarily economic. The number one concern on the American people's mind is rebuilding the American economy, the families around the dinner table. That's their number one concern, not issuing all this debt. You have a government right now spending in epic proportions, and it's clearly evident from this Massachusetts win that people are saying that these failed policies are not going to get people back to work and get this economy up and running. And you know what, from a 46 year seat to a Democrat now switching sides, listen, it's out there now, it's clearly evident. Well, you know, Jonathan, um, Imogen brought up a very good point. I mean, this could be just a sort of momentary rage, right? I mean, and then it's like a flash in the pan and, and, and we move on. Neil, I got to tell you, I was disappointed in the senator's performance in, in your interview. I think he came across, from my perspective, very much as a flash in the pan. I mean, are you telling me that the next great successor to, to, to Ronald Reagan said that we should put entitlement spending to an up or down vote? I mean, this is a gentleman who, you know, rallies against socialized medicine, but voted for Massachusetts Healthcare's version of socialized meth, uh, medicine. And I think, you know, the, the panel is right in the sense that he's for tax cuts, but he talks about it, Neil, in practical purposes, right? We've got to cut taxes to spur the economy, not in moral purposes, that you have a right to your own life and your own money. So I'm glad to see that the Republicans are putting something up against the wall, something new. But to me, at this point, he seems like more of the same. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because true to form, Jonathan, he, he, you know, he did vote for this Romney care. It was Mitt Romney, with whom he was very, very close. Mitt Romney, who he introduced today at this PAC conference today. So, so they're, they're, they're kind of joined at the hip, and, and he's not an uber conservative here. But Imogen, I'm curious, is, is the read that you get from your friends and colleagues abroad that America's turning or, or that they still like Barack Obama, they still like you know, the, the Democrats move to the left, what? Well, at the end of the day, when Obama came in, we all found it extraordinary that an, you had an African-American president, and we thought it was something to celebrate. Um, and Bush is, was very much hated internationally. However, certainly in Britain now, there's that whole thing of, is Obama a Blair, which is all style, no substance, yeah, or is there some substance there? You guys Tony Blair for 12 I, years. I didn't. <laughs> I you didn't, didn't, personally. Well, then you were the only I one. I didn't, well. Because he was a rock star for a long time. He was a rock star for a while. you guys turn on your leaders, too. He, we all turn on our leaders, yes. but if you look at Thatcher, who was hated for years, she's now going to get a state funeral. So when they are great, it does come good in the end. Is yeah, Obama going to be a great As leader, she knows? was very popular, right? Um, no, it was very, very mixed. She was either loved or hated. She was a polarizing force, and Obama doesn't seem to be any force at the moment. Well, what do you make of that real quick? Well, Imogen has some great points, uh, you know. Even though she dismissed the segment. <laughs> All I can say is that right now you have a government, right now, that can't even project their own budget. This administration's budget is 25% of our GDP. With $787 billion in a stimulus package, they could not even forecast correctly that jobs were going to be at 8%. They're Very over 10%. Point. Very good point. So now... Right. You know, how can anyone have faith in this government? Okay. Um, there could be a variety of other factors for futures, Tom, but, and they are what they are in volatile, as you've reminded me in the past. But uh, they knew this day was coming, right? And I know the discount rate isn't the rate, and it's not the Fed funds rate, but the wheels are in motion, don't you think? Listen, I don't think 
everyone should be that concerned. I mean, the Fed is only trying to bring back everything to normal, to a normal environment. So, what is normal? I mean, I mean, raising rates. By the way, the discount rate rose all of a quarter point, three quarters percent. Sure. But I mean, short term, it may be a caution for people out there, but I think over the long term, people see the Fed sees the economy improving. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, is the view abroad, Ibija, that, that, that the U.S. is going to head back into something bad economically? I think something good, actually. The best analogy I ever heard about the, the credit crisis, as it were, was it was a bit like somebody having a heart attack. When someone has a heart attack, there are two critical moments. The first, the initial rescue, the resuscitation, and then it's about when you take them off life support, when you take those tubes out, and which order you take the tubes out. So what the Fed is doing now, it's baby steps. So it's trying to take a tube out, trying to get us back to normal. So they are, they're leading the way as ever, which is where you should be with America. Well, some of those patients die, of course. It's <laughs> some of them do, but we hope that, you know, as America and your wonderful health care, don't get me started, but we hope that you'll be leading the way and getting it right. All right well, um, you, you'll never say a bad thing about Barack Obama, will you? <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, so, Jonathan, is the sense right now that, that, let's say, I don't know how soon before they start moving on consumer direct rates, like the federal funds rate and all that, but that that's just a matter of time within six months, within a year? What's your sense? Well, Neil, if you take a look at the, the major trends here, and <clears throat> that's what, of course, as investors, we try to look at. I, I think it, you know, the, it is starting to shape up that the trend has changed when it comes to interest rates. And all of a sudden, you've got a lot of folks who had bought bonds all throughout 2009 because they were scared about risk in the stock market, realizing that the yield on those bonds is going up, i.e. the price is going down. So you know, I'm, I'm concerned about a lot of investors who had bought bonds for safety. If interest rates start to shoot up and quickly, they could find out that they're actually sitting on losses on some of those investments. How do you play this going forward, Tom? I think there's a lot of opportunities out there right now. Where? You know, generally, the energy sector, I believe, Still. technology, I do, very much so. I also believe that right now that the government is printing a lot of money, and the Fed is just trying to rein it in a little bit. So it's not a caution for concern. I think the Fed sees the economy healing, and they're taking the proper measures to let people know that's what's happening. Um, Imogen, I know you... You, you don't want to hear anything bad about Barack Obama. But we had a guy here <laughs> earlier on who was saying we could, could be in for Jimmy Carter type inflation uh, in the not too distant future, especially if the spending gets out of control, which uh, it is. Then Barack Obama's Jimmy Carter. We will see. I mean, I have to say. Were you that even alive when Jimmy Carter was president? <laughs> Obviously not. I'm extremely young. No, um, I think we, we will see what happens. I do hope that the administration has been reading their history books. I think they have. At the end of the day, we're in a better position than we were in, uh, at the end of 07. So I, I actually trust the Fed. All right. Uh, by the way, in Britain and elsewhere, is there a sense that Europe's heading into something bad again? I mean, that, you know, what was it? Euros getting pounded and all this other stuff? Pigs, you mean. Um, Portugal, Italy, Greece, right. and Spain. Um, to an extent, I have to say, as a British person, we're extremely relieved that we're not in the euro and that we kept our pound. So for now, for now. Yes, Tony Blair, your buddy, was Greece in the skin stuff. <laughs> I, you can't really have right. economic union without political union, so that's a larger debate that Europe needs to have. Um, but I think America is a better place to be at the moment. That's why I'm here. I appreciate you clarifying the big <laughs> thing, too. Uh, Jonathan, uh, your sense then tomorrow, the days forward, I mean, the market's going to be testing these headwinds with rates rising and all that? Well, Neil, I mean, a lot, I think, will happen overnight, and I think that, you know, to be honest, tomorrow morning could very much be a crapshoot. For frequently, we've seen markets sell off sharply on the news uh, and then end up uh, up by the end of the day. I think, you know, especially when there is so much news coming out of Washington, not even Wall Street. I mean, it's not earnings that have got futures down 70 points after hours. It's obviously news from the Fed. So I think with, right. with Washington still dictating so much of the economy, you've got to keep some dry powder as well. All right, guys, I want to thank everybody, some smart folks all, and of course my thanks uh, to a senator who's getting a ton of email. Right.